Hello, Westdalers. I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the Unified Board. They have asked me to bring you up to date on activities, particularly in light of the provincial government's announcement that you may have heard regarding reopening worship facilities in many of Ontario's health units jurisdictions. Our message is that, as you can perhaps imagine, there is more than meets the eye to reopening. While it is easy to close, it is difficult and a longer term prospect to reopen. The rules and guidelines that must be met are significantly more complex than simply social distancing. Worship will not simply be reinstated in the format you are used to. There will be additional procedures and costs and we feel strongly that it is better to do this in a well-planned, gradual way than to rush things and thereby be the cause of an outbreak, as has been the case in some places. Our plan and expectation, especially given that we would soon be planning for reduced attendance at church during the summer vacation period anyway, is to continue as we have been with the virtual services and use the summer to clarify and initiate the best practices we will apply in returning to face-to-face -to -face worship meetings. We are currently planning to reopen the building in September. There will be reduced overall capacity and distancing requirements. Entering and leaving will be more regimented. Masks will be required, at least initially, and there will be no mass singing, though sol soloists may be permitted. These are just a few of the things we will see, and over the summer there will be more details of what needs to be done, and perhaps further relaxation of some rules. I trust that your faith in our handling of events, like your faith in God, remains strong, and we will indeed see you in person in September at Westdale when we resume Sunday services. In the meantime, we'll continue these YouTube sessions and we will keep you advised in this way. Please email me or Bev via the posted office account if you have any needs or concerns that we can help with. Thank you and stay well. Thank you, Brenda and Ashley. Uh, Brenda, for your playing of our prelude, and Ashley, for um, your message from the Unified Board with regards to uh, the, the announcement by the Ontario government uh, around church reopening and how that, uh, how that looks for Westdale United Church going forward uh, with uh, care and um, concern for, for everyone within our community, and hence the need to uh, work toward uh, an opening uh, possibly around the 1st of September. Our time of worship uh, continues this morning as we invite the light of Christ to be with us, and uh, I invite you to hear these words. This candle that is lit dances with the presence of the Spirit reminding us of the warmth of community in which God calls us to gather and the light that shines with wisdom, insight and clarity for us in our time of worship. As I light the Christ candle, we will hear our own Brenda Shepherd playing our candle lighting chorus, Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary. Our call to worship this morning. Come, come softly, come singing, come sorrowing or in joy. Come prayer filled and in wonder. Come now, come worship you whom God made for love. Let us pray. We offer you, O oh God, our whole selves, our flawed and quirky, incomplete but striving selves. Awaken us to discover the unique service you have placed into our lives. 
encourage us to accept the opportunities for helping and healing that lie before us. Thank you for accepting us just as we are and using us to do your will in the world. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 337 in Voices United, Blessed Assurance. Thank you so much, Brenda. We will continue in worship with our prayer of illumination and our scripture reading, and indeed that's offered to us this morning by uh, Brenda Shepherd. And I would invite you to, to listen to Brenda as she offers uh, our uh, prayer of illumination and our scripture reading from Genesis 18, 1 to 15. The prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as we read these scriptures, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Genesis 18, verses 1 to 15. One hot summer afternoon, Abraham was sitting by the entrance up to his tent near the sacred trees of Manor when the Lord appeared to him. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. He quickly ran to meet them, bowed with his face to the ground, and said, Please come to my home where I can serve you. I'll have some water brought so that you can wash your feet, then you can rest under the tree. Let me get some food to give you strength before you leave. I would be honored to serve you. Thank you very much, they answered. We accept your offer. Abraham quickly went to his tent and said to Sarah, hurry, get a large sack of flour and make some bread. After saying this, he rushed off to his herd of cattle and picked out one of the best calves, which his servant quickly prepared. He then served his guests some yogurt and milk together with the meat. While they were eating, he stood near them under the trees and they asked, where is your wife, Sarah? She is right there in the tent, Abraham answered. One of the guests was the Lord, and he said, I'll come back about this time next year, and when I do, Sarah will already have a son. Sarah was behind Abraham, listening at the entrance to the tent. Abraham and Sarah were very old, and Sarah was well past the age for having children. So she laughed and said to herself, Now that I am worn out and my husband is old, Will I really know such happiness? The Lord asked Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Does she doubt that she can have a child in her old age? I am the Lord. There is nothing too difficult for me. I'll come back next year at this time, I promise. 
and Sarah will already have a son. Sarah was so frightened that she lied and said, I didn't lie. Yes, she did, he answered. Thank you so much, Brenda. And uh, now with our anthem this morning, uh, we turn again to Brenda. And Brenda is going to be accompanying Brenda McClelland uh, as uh, Brenda McClelland offers to us a solo of I See the Love of God. I see the love of God in every river flowing wide, flowing free. I see the love of God in every ocean reaching further than I can see. I see the love of God in every valley offering shelter to you and me. I see the love of God in every mountain, standing fast through eternity. The love of God is all around me, whatever the trouble, pain, or care. much Brenda uh, S and Brenda M for your beautiful music uh, our anthem this morning I see the love of God my reflection today intertwines the uh, scripture reading from Genesis today in which we heard the story of Sarah and Abraham and the wonderful gift of grace bestowed upon them by God at an age when they would have thought anything other than uh, what it was that took place. And how that indeed uh, intertwines with those of us who are folks of a certain age and that God indeed uh, um, will come calling because God is not done with us yet. And and more so too that, that the gift of the wisdom of our years uh, our years and wisdom that are called upon to enrich the world for the better and to guide the generations coming up behind us. And indeed, this is called the gift of years. I am finding it very interesting to be the chronological age that I am now. Being born a baby boomer, I come from a generation that thought we would live forever. We were going to change the world for the better protest against the establishment that we saw as the enemy, and we never ever were going to become our parents. Well, here I am, knowing that I'm not going to live forever. I am not certain that my generation has changed the world for the better. I am the establishment, and heaven forbid, but I look in the mirror, seeing my dad, and listening to myself, I hear my mother. With the age that I am at, I have had another realization. What can I contribute to the world, especially once I retire? I wonder what my life will look like after December the 25th this year. To what will my time be used? And as a person of faith, I wonder what use I will be to God, should God come a-calling. 
During Faith Chat this past year, the group centered conversation around a book titled The Gift of Years, Growing Older Gracefully, written by Joan Chittister, a Benedictine nun and a world leader in spiritual writings. The overarching message of the book asks, how do you view the aging process? Is it tinged with anxiety and regret? Or do you see it as an adventure, a time to find meaning and a ripening? Or is it a little of both? Gift of Years invites the readers to not only accept, but to celebrate getting old. As Sister Joan offers inspirational and illuminating stories that highlight the many facets of the aging process, from purposes and challenges to struggles and surprises. Chittister writes that each of us journey through the first stages of life, young and middle stages, with a sense of knowing of what is expected of us in those years. Once we are fortunate enough to reach the senior years, all that defined us in the early two stages is left behind. And if we listen to culture and society around us, the message is that we are no longer able to serve a purpose. Rather, Chittister offers that these years of growing older ushers us into a deep wisdom and reflection that when offered to and appreciated by those younger ultimately contributes to the making of a better world for all. The key is that as that older generation, we are called to realize that going forward into this stage, we still have much to give of ourselves. Oddly enough, contrary to what we might experience in modern culture, the Bible often speaks of those in a good old age and full of years which, or sorry, who richly continue to contribute to life. Many of the key characteristics chosen by God to move forward the divine human story were found in folks of old age, many years past their prime, especially according to modern standards. A better example of movers and shakers of a certain age could not be found than in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, when we hear today of this snippet from the life of Abraham and Sarah, who certainly prove that God still had much in mind for this mature couple. For a few moments, let us look at the sacred story that Brenda read for us today. Abraham is taking shade by a stand of oak trees when he sees three men approaching in the heat of the day. And he seems to know that they are no ordinary strangers because while hospitality is quite literally a matter of life and death in that semi-arid climate, Abraham goes above and beyond the call of duty in his hosting of these guests. He moves as fast as his hundred-year-old legs will carry him. He runs to meet them. He bows down to the ground. He runs to the tent to tell Sarah to whip up a good dinner. And he runs to the herd to rustle up some good veal. When he sets this hastily prepared feast before the strangers, they eat and then they ask, where is your wife, Sarah? As it turns out, Sarah is eavesdropping on the conversation from inside the tent entrance. Her eavesdropping is soon revealed upon her reacting with laughter at the notion proposed by one of the strangers that she will give birth to a son who will be the progeny promised to them by God. Understandably, she would question the ability of Abraham and herself to deliver on the promise. I know I can understand Sarah's reason for laughter. I can imagine that there may be some of you today that fully understand her buoyant reaction. So it may seem odd to us, as it certainly did to Abraham, to hear one of the strangers who really is God in disguise state. Why did Sarah laugh and say, 
Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Talk about wondering what direction your older years will take. Such a 360 degree turnaround. I can imagine parenthood was the last place that Abraham and Sarah would have thought to find themselves in the twilight time of their lives. However, God was not finished with them. God tapped Abraham and Sarah into the vocation of parenting a whole new nation at this time in their lives, when, quite frankly, they were well into retirement. Talk about the ultimate calling. I think that the story illustrates the grace of God when pondering the question, is anything too wonderful for God? Sister Joan would say that the spirit working in and through Abraham and Sarah's response proves that very obviously there is not anything too wonderful for God. It is, I believe, faith that invites us as Christians to be open to and to respond to God when God comes a calling. Also, it is obvious from the story of Abraham and Sarah that God does not consider that old age is a viable reason to reject God's call. Rather, this story reminds us that God appears in unexpected places and comes to us at any age. In fact, Abraham goes on to live for another 75 years. This scripture story uplifts what I gleaned from Sister Joan's book. Old age is a highly desirable goal. This stage of life, though, invites those of us within its boundary the opportunity to live purposefully, fulfilled, and sharing in the wisdom we have earned throughout our time as young and middle-aged people. The stories of our biblical ancestors vividly display that the goal is not merely a longer life, but a life filled with purpose, with God's call and our faithful response. Having discerned the grace-filled gift God offers through the illustration of this sacred story today, I believe that in my time of retirement, God will call upon me, and I pray that my response will come from a place of faith. However, I do not plan to prepare a baby nursery in my spare bedroom anytime soon. I hope that each of you, as you move through the chronological phases of your life, and in particular, if you share along with me the stage of older age, that when God comes calling you, you will respond in faith. For there is nothing that is too wonderful for God. Thanksgiving and praise to our amazing God. Amen. Let us pray. Generous and loving God, we thank you for your blessings without number. We bless you for the beauty of creation, for day and for night, for summer and winter, for sun and for rain and for seed time and harvest, for the bounty supplying all our needs. We bless you for protecting us in our weakness and renewing our strength of spirit and for guiding us as we resist evil and calling us to your truth and to your service. We praise you for sending Jesus to be among us for his life on earth, his sufferings and his death, for his resurrection to new life and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O oh God, that our hearts may grow in thankfulness for these and all your gifts of grace, so that as people of new life, we may proclaim your praise in Jesus' name, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those 
who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in our worship as we hear these words that invite us into our response of offering. What a privilege we have to share in God's mission to adapt and be responsible to the needs around us. Thank you for continuing to be diligent about putting aside your weekly offering and mailing the sum total amounts by check directly to the church so our treasurer can access these funds. As we offer our financial gifts, we continue to support the ministry and the service of Westdale United Church today and tomorrow. Let us pray. We dedicate these gifts and our lives to you, O God, in thanksgiving for your great gift of Jesus, in whom we know an inner peace that is beyond our human understanding. Strengthen and empower us with the Holy Spirit to be bearers of this peace wherever you go. Amen. Our closing hymn this day from Voices United 506, Take My Life and Let It Be. Thank you so much, Brenda. And as uh, we ready to, to leave our worship places and spaces within our homes, uh, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the folks who uh, uh, support uh, myself in the bringing to you our YouTube worship. Uh, our Brenda Shepherd and for her gift of music and for also inviting choir members to sing solos, and so we thank Brenda McClellan for her solo this morning. Uh, I'd like to also extend thanks so much to Tom Keaton for his gift of editing all the YouTube, or all, sorry, all the videos that come to him from the various folks who are you see on the YouTube worship. And of course, uh, this morning in particular, I'd like to thank Chair of our Unified Board, Ashley LaBelle, as he was able to offer some uh, clarity and wisdom around uh, the decision of the Unified Board to work in a very careful um, manner towards the reopening of Westdale United Church for worship uh, in September, uh, we hope, uh, according to the current uh, phase two guidelines of the health units. And so as we uh, go into our week, uh, I would invite you to hear these words uh, of sending out, which will be followed by Brenda playing for us our Westdale Choral Blessing, Let There Be Love, and a postlude of Let My Words Be Few. And so my dear folks, I send you out in the name of the Creator, the Spirit, and the Only Begotten. Go in peace to be who you really are, to do what you were gifted to do. Fulfill your destiny as the beloved child of God you are, and may God continue to bless you. Amen.